Hello, Bobby Torres here, and welcome to Frightbox Goes Gorilla, where we produce pro level productions using simple utilitarian style gear within unexpected environments. And in today's video, I'm going to reveal to you my entire mobile recording rig, and also some tricks that I utilize in order to keep things efficient, neat, and productive when recording outside of my studio. Now, before I dive into the gear rundown, I just wanna let you know that you can have direct access right now for absolutely free to my Frightbox Essential Gear Guide. The guide outlines all of the gear that I use in my studio and out of my studio in order to run my recording business. If you're looking to save money and only acquire the gear that you actually need, for real, download the guide, check it out, I think you're gonna dig it. All right, so with that out of the way, let's dive into the gear and what I've got going on with my mobile recording rig. Let's check it out. All right, so here we are in my living room and I have my entire mobile recording rig all packed up for a show that uh, I have on Friday. I'm teaming up with my good friends in Alden Booking, a New Jersey based booking company. And I'm gonna be recording one of the bands at this upcoming show again on Friday. And that's one thing I wanna mention is this uh, mobile recording rig is not for studio use per se. I mean, a lot of the gear I do use in the studio as well, or when I'm tracking a band in a more traditional sense, like multi-tracking all separately, but it's a little more simplified and skimmed down because again, I'm recording the show itself, but I still need a lot of inputs, I still need to mic everything, I still need to record DIs for the guitars, and I need to be efficient and not bring too much equipment, but also not forget anything and not have something on hand that I might need. And that's one thing I wanna quickly mention is efficiency and staying organized. And as you could tell, I have my bins here clearly labeled. This is my XLR bin. This is my snakes bin. This is my rack that contains my interface, which I'm gonna share in a second. This bag here contains all of my microphones. And this gig bag here contains all of my microphone boom stands. And luckily I don't need a lot because the club does have uh, booms for the vocals, but but I need to supply everything else for the guitars and the drums. All right, so let's start at the top of the gear pile. Uh, on top, I have my duffel bag, which contains all of my microphones. Let's dig in. So within the duffel bag, you'll see multiple other bags. And uh, this is all for organizational purposes. Let's pull one out. Right here, we have our drum mics. Here's my Zoom H4, which I'll soon explain. My condenser mics. And then finally, my dynamic mics. Now there's a little bit of a cheat here. Uh, the drum mic bag contains mainly dynamics as well, but I decided to keep them in a separate sub bag for organizational purposes. Let's see what's going on in the dynamics bag. So up first is the Biodynamic M88, which is a very, very nice uh, dynamic microphone. I don't use it all of the time. I actually have a windscreen here, which doesn't fit that snug. But anyway, it is a hypercardioid for when I'm in noisy rooms. And I want to reject as much cymbals as possible with the vocalist. It doesn't get used all the time. It's a nice microphone, but to be honest, an SM58 does the trick for me. I only need this in situations where the drummer is super loud and when I'm really concerned about cymbal bleed but it's a nice microphone nonetheless. I've got a cheapo PG58, I believe it's called, which is kind of like uh, Shure's cheaper version of an SM58. And this is my backup mic. And it's also the drummer mic if the drummer is the singer or if something breaks and I need an extra dynamic. I've had this for about 20 years, almost 20 years. And it's still going strong. Of course, you can't have a mic bag without SM57s. I use these live on guitar cabs and I've got two of them for this outing. And that's it for my dynamics bag. Let's see what's in the condensers bag. For this show, I am bringing a PZM mic, boundary mic as a mono room. To let you know, people always ask me this, the exact microphone that it is, is the AT871R. I own three of them. I bought them on eBay for about 20 to $30 each used. They don't make them anymore, but they are definitely a great buy if you're looking for some killer rugged room microphones. And I'm also bringing a pair of Shure SM81s for drum overheads, super durable microphones, and my backup mic I've had since 2005 and this is just the hi-hat mic that came with my original um, Samson drum mic pack. I will still use it from time to time on hi-hats. When I do live recordings I don't mic hi-hats it's just overkill but it's here just in case something happens to one of the SM81s which has never actually happened but you know better safe than sorry. Okay right here is my drum mic bag and we have an 
Audix D6, which is a great kick drum microphone. Uh, by the way, the reason why these are all labeled like this is these microphones are taken with me all over the place, different people's houses, different clubs, different venues, and I wanna make sure that my mics don't get confused with anyone else's. So right here is the Audix D6 for kick drum. Uh, today I'm bringing a Beta 57 for snare drum. The only reason why I'm bringing this one with me in my mobile rig is I don't wanna use up all of the 57s at the studio in case my buddy Ben Karras has a drum session. So I'm going with the Beta 57. It works for me. It's just not as hyped as a regular 57, but it gets the job done. And I'm using this on snare drum. And then the only other microphones, I have three of these. These are super old Samson clip-on Tom mics. The original clips are long gone and broken. I've had these mics since 2005 and they're still going strong. If you download the gear guide, I talk about these. I think they're a steal and I'm still using them almost 20 years later. And these will clip on to all of the Toms during the show. And again, there are three of them in my bag. And that's it for the microphones. Now, if it were my own show, I'd be bringing some some more SM58s or some other vocal microphones. But again, the club will have their own microphones. And I think the band that we're recording, the singer uses uh, her own microphone. So I'm bringing my Bayer Dynamic just in case. So in the Zoom H4 bag is an ancient, Anction Zoom H4, which I've had since 2007. Uh, I'm not using this as a recording device. I'm actually using it as an external mic preamp. The XR18, the Behringer XR18 has 18 inputs, but two of those are quarter inch ins. So I'm gonna be miking the room with this guy right here, which is actually a stereo condenser microphone. Again, I'm not recording anything onto this unit. I don't even know if it actually records anymore. It's pretty old and it's been beat to hell, but the line level out will be connected to my interface, which will give me an additional two inputs on top of the 16 mic inputs that the XR18 has on board. So I'm repurposing an old piece of gear that I haven't used in a very long time as a room mic, a stereo room mic. And the appropriate cabling is in this bag right here. So before we get to the good stuff, let me talk about what's going on in this gig bag over here. This is my boom gig bag, which contains all of my microphone boom stands. Now up at the top, I have my micro booms for my guitars. Oh, <laughs> just dropped one. There you go, nice and compact. Again, it's labeled so it doesn't get confused with anyone else's. And I've got two of them for the two uh, guitar players that I'll most likely be recording. If you have more than two guitar players, that's one too many. Just kidding, not kidding, just kidding. We also have two full-size microphone boom stands, two shorter ones, as well as two camera tripods. And that is all that's going with me in this mobile recording rig, more than enough. Okay, and I have my interface which again is the Behringer XR18 loaded into this Gator Cases three space rack. Now you may have heard me say this in other videos. I also mentioned this in the gear guide. This is probably my favorite piece of gear of all time. The amount of things you could do with the Behringer XR18 is insane. You could run a PA with it. You could record up to 16 channels as far as mic pre's and an additional two channels if you have external mic pre's. And you also have eight outputs. Now you see some markings on this particular unit and it's for when I run my own shows. But in this case, Alden Media is running this show and I'm just stealing a couple lines from the vocals and I'll be recording all of the instruments. So I don't have to run front of house at this show. I'm just simply recording the band and this unit is perfect. All I have to do is connect a USB cable to my cheapo laptop and it's plug and play. The first bin here is labeled snakes and that's because it contains cable snakes. But up first is my laptop that I have in this case. Let's see what we have in here. It's just a cheapo $300 HP laptop. And honestly, it runs Reaper perfectly. I've recorded up to 18 channels for hours at a time and I've never had a problem. Reaper is awesome in this respect. It's super duper stable and I'm recording everything to an external SD card. 18 tracks at once for hours at a time. Again, all on this $300 computer, definitely worth the money. So in my snakes bin here, we have a couple of extension cords, one for the Zoom H4 and one for the Behringer XR18. And other than that, we just have two snakes. I have a five foot eight channel sub snake for the drums and a 16 channel send four channel receive 50 foot XLR snake for everything else, including the drums. I plug the one snake into this snake. Now I just wanna say this, snakes are amazing. If there's one thing I can't stand is going to a studio or especially a show where I'm doing front of house where there are cables all over the stage. There are cables that are getting tangled. Things are a mess. It takes forever to set up. We don't know what cables are working, which ones aren't. We're using extra long cables when it's unnecessary. Using snakes 
really cleans up the stage. And if you're working in the studio, like I do as well, it allows you to use shorter XLRs so you have a nice, clean recording experience. And most important of all, it saves you time. Quicker setup, quicker breakdown, it's just a win-win. I am not a neat person by nature, but I've learned to be organized. For example, all of my channels are labeled here on the snake itself. It took hours of work, but honestly, the hours I spent organizing and labeling everything pay off in the weeks and months and years that I save having to decipher and untangle a spaghetti hell of a mess of cables down the road. So that's it. Those are my snakes in my snake bin. Not exciting, but essential to a smooth recording experience. Now, before I dive into my XLR bin, I just want to let you know that I have a new second YouTube channel called Frightbox Productions, where I host and showcase up and coming and independent artists performing 100% live. And that's actually one of the shows that we'll be recording on Friday with this rig. On that channel, I'm sort of like the Crypt Keeper. I introduce the band, I talk about the song, I talk about the band itself. We showcase bands playing live in the studio, at venues, pretty much anywhere. So if you wanna hear more from me and get to see the bands that I work with, subscribe to Frightbox Productions. There's a link below in this video's description. All right, so let's see what's happening in this XLR bag. First things first, we have a bag within the tote over here. And this contains all of my DIs and my XLR splitters, which I'm gonna be using on Friday. So here are the three DIs that I'm bringing with me, one for bass, two for guitars. I've been trying to order more of these Whirlwind IMP2s, and unfortunately they are back ordered everywhere. So I decided to pick up a Behringer version of the same DI box, or at least it looks like it. Online, it looks like it has great reviews. I've tested it and it sounds identical to the Whirlwind. So we'll see, the Whirlwind is 60 bucks. The Behringer is 30 and it seems to get the job done. Again, this is just for stealing DIs at the show from the guitar player. So I have both the clean DI and the amplifier. Totally worth the investment and totally worth the effort. And then here is an active DI, just a cheapo old Samson that I don't even know where I got it. I think my old boss gave this to me and it's still being used. Great little DI here. It's just active and it's stereo. For live use, I don't worry too much whether it's a passive or a stereo DI. I found that passives do the job. I'm happy as long as I steal a DI. Got all my bases covered. Okay, then in the bag itself, we have four XLR splitters by Art. It's called the Splitcom Pro. Now, if this were my own show and I were running front of house and bringing my own PA, I wouldn't need to split anything. I'll be mixing it later in the studio. So I'm just gonna be splitting the vocal mics at the venue, and that's what these are for. They don't get used a whole lot, but they come in handy, again, if you have to split XLRs. So within the XLR bin, I have five quarter inch cables for when I have to split the guitar player's signals and the bass player's signal from the DI box. They are ready to go and all labeled with Frightbox Productions so they don't get confused with anyone else's cables. And underneath we have 20 XLR microphone cables. If you notice here, I color coded all of them. All of the purples are 10 footers. The greens are 25 footers. Orange is in here, which are 15 footers. And then I have some pinks, which are five footers. Now all of this color coding might seem overkill to you, but believe me, when you have to work quickly, organization goes a long way. You don't have to think. I know if I have a guitar cab that's right next to the snake box, I don't need an ultra long uh, green cable, which is a 25 footer. I could go with the purple and I actually have all of my input lists pre-planned. So when I get to the show, I don't even have to think. I just simply execute. Being organized, color coding, labeling, definitely worth it. It's the professional way to work, at least in my opinion. So there you have it. That is my new and improved mobile recording rig. Now, like I said, I'm not going to be doing a studio recording with this rig, but there's a lot of overlap. When I do studio recording in a gorilla situation, I'm using the same interface, the same light cables, the same snake box, most of the same mics, the same boom stands. The only difference is I don't need studio monitors in this situation, and I don't need a more powerful computer. All right, so there you have it. That is my new and improved mobile recording rig and I'm curious to know what you thought of it. Did you find it inspiring or were you kind of let down and maybe disappointed that I'm not using more expensive gear? Let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinion. And again, if you'd like some solid gear recommendations, that'll save you a ton of money so you can focus only on the gear that you actually need. You can have direct access for absolutely free to my Frightbox Essential Gear Guide. There's a link below in this video's description. Also, if you're curious to see what I've got going on when I record these bands live, subscribe to the Frightbox Productions YouTube channel. We've got a ton of cool stuff on the way. Again, there's a link below in this video's description. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a new video on metal and rock production. And until next time, happy recording.